Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft. So today I have a build for you guys that's going to be universally used and universally loved. DMs from far and wide will need to put this on their table because players will find it in towns, they'll find it in castles, they'll find it in dungeons, and they can find it in creepy old manors. And that is a fountain. So I'm going to make something that's pretty uh, generic and you can just plop down in place of wherever you need it. So let's just jump into the build and I'll show you how I got there. Okay, so I have a statue from Reaper uh, Bones 4 Kickstarter and one of the bases that I cut from my room uh, video. And so it's a four inch wide circle base and those are kind of the two pieces I'm gonna be starting with. Adding to those, I'm gonna be cutting some bricks. So I'm gonna just start cutting some strips of foam and measuring them out. Uh, these are about a quarter of an inch by uh, double that in length. So I'm just going to start stri uh, trimming these strips and then I will be chopping them up into bricks. Make sure to use a sharp knife when you do this because you don't want to be pulling and tearing the foam. You want a nice clean cut. Also helps to take your metal ruler and kind of imprint on the foam when you're going for a clean cut. Well, you don't have to trace it with the pencil so much. So I'm just using the indicated uh, measurements on my table to just chop these roughly. They don't have to be perfect. Once I'm done that, I'm going to cut out a little podium for the statue to stand on because I want it to count, have some height to it. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball that, cut it out of more XPS, and then I'm going to carve it up. So there's a step in this process that you're not going to see because my video footage got corrupt, but I'm just going to take my knife and carve uh, this to the shape that I want. I'm cutting out like geometric shapes, trying to make this look like uh, it's carved out of stone. And then I'm going to take a small exacto knife and carve more details in the sides, like letter shapes and, and uh, runes or stuff like that. And then once I've carved that in, I'm going to take a toothpick and kind of widen those cuts so that they show when the paint is on it. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start gluing the bricks onto the base. And I'm just using Eileen's tacky glue. And I just ran a bead along the outside and then layered it down with bricks. And then I'm grabbing individual bricks and just gluing them on uh, the way you would glue bricks on. Pretty straightforward. Every once in a while I'm just running my hand along the outside to try and straighten them out because the tacky glue will hold them in place more or less but they do kind of shift around as you're working on it so just go back and clean it up a little bit. You do have a good amount of working time with this glue. So I'm just going two layers high and then I'm going to glue the podium in the middle. So I've cut a strip of cardboard that is the same size as my fountain because I felt like the bricks were a little rough on top and I didn't want to trim them down so I figured I would just glue this on to make it a little more uniform. And then I'm just going to cut some sliver bricks and put them in anywhere there's a gap. And I'm going to run my finger along the outside just to catch any glue that might be dripping. So in between that, I have glued the statue on top with super glue. It melts the foam slightly, but I didn't use very much of it, so I wasn't too worried. So the next step, I'm going to be using some realistic water on this, or at least down the line I will be using it. And that means that we need uh, kind of a watertight area in this fountain for, so that it doesn't leak out the sides. The bricks are not watertight, so I'm going to cut some strips of cardboard and I'm going to run those along the inside and then glue them in with some more tacky glue. And once that's dry, I'm going to take the hot glue gun and run a bead around the bottom of it so that the water or the realistic water does not escape while it's drying. Just like that. Okay, so once that's dry, I'm going to cut another base out of some MDF just so this can sit nicely on it. And here's where I'm taking the hot glue and just running the bead around to make sure that nothing can escape. 
using low temp on my hot glue gun so that I don't melt the foam at the bottom. Okay, so once everything's all dry, I'm going to take the Black Magic base coat recipe from Jeremy at Black Magic Craft, and I'm going to hit everything except the statue with it because it is a Reaper mini and I can't bring myself to put black paint and Mod Podge on a Reaper mini. So I'm going to paint that with some Vallejo uh, primer, black primer, separately. Okay. So once that's dry, I'm going to start painting it. So I'm going to take a dark taupe and just sponge paint it. Starting with the shades of taupe looks a little dramatic, especially on the black uh, base coat for these, but it gives a really nice undertone to your stone. When I first started crafting, I would paint you know, dark gray, light gray on top of black and then with some white highlights and it gives not a very natural look. So I found that using the taupe shades as your base makes everything feel a little more natural. So some areas are too uh, tight to hit with the sponge, so I'm gonna be dry brushing them instead. Or I guess you could call it dry brushing. It's kind of a very wet dry brush. The point is to not totally coat it. So once that's dry, I'm going to come in with a lighter taupe and hit all the same areas. And then once the taupes are dry, I'm going to move into the grays. So here I have a light gray and I'm just going to sponge paint it. And that's going to cover up a lot of the taupe, but some of it will show through and that piece that shows through is going to make it look more realistic. So once that's dry, I'm going to come in with a homemade black wash and just hit everything. It's more of a dark brown wash, really, but that's what it takes. So I'm just going to give it a very liberal coating, not too worried about pooling on it, just on the top ridge and the statue itself, but as far as the bricks, I'm okay with whatever happens. So I'll leave that for a bit to dry and then I'm going to come in with a suede. And this is an actual dry brush. The suede works really well as the uh, dry brush after the wash because it just really brings out those highlights and it's not like a perfect gray, it's more of like a tan brown so it just feels right. And then I'm going to mix some white into my suede once that's dry and I'm going to hit just the areas that I want to be the most highlighted. So now I'm going to be painting the base where the water is going to be. So the realistic water requires kind of a paint coat underneath because you don't really want to tint it, you want it to be pretty translucent. So I'm going to hit the bottom with a dark blue. And while that's still wet, I'm going to start mixing in lighter shades into it. And just kind of spreading that around until it gets an effect that I'm happy with. Okay, so once that's dry, I'm going to take some grass tufts and I'm just going to kind of stick them in around the sides. Because the realistic water is translucent, these are going to show through and I'm hoping to kind of give some uh, depth to this. I'm also going to take some uh, of the Citadel Greenwash, can't remember its name, but I'm going to take that and I'm just going to splotch it around in, in areas that I select and then hopefully that's going to show through and give a really nice look. So I'm going to take some realistic water now that everything's dry. I'm going to put a drop of uh, blue wash in there, not too much, and I'm going to mix it up and pour it in. 
So this is my first time using this product, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. The bottle says to just pour it in a eighth of an inch, and for whatever reason my brain was like, yeah, quarter of an inch. So I poured it in a quarter of an inch, and it's supposed to take about a full day to dry. I found that it took me about three full days to dry, but once it was dry, it looked like this. I was pretty happy with it, but the top was a little too perfect, so I took some gloss Mod Podge and just kind of slapped it around on there, and um, once it was kind of totally coated, I just spent a little time moving it around with the brush until it gave me an effect that I was happy with. And the gloss Mod Podge I've used before, it dries very translucent, almost can't even see it at all, but it just kind of breaks like that visual surface tension. And there it is. And that's it friends, that's how I build a fountain. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, I'd love to get your feedback, and give me a thumbs up if you had a good time, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Mm.